Well, well, well. Welcome back, gentlemen. Oh, and ladies. That's all right. Today we're going to be answering a question that I've been getting for the last few months, and it's about time that I answer it, and that is, what is the whoop that you're flying? What is your daily flyer? What does it consist of? What parts do you use? Your favorite camera, your favorite motors, your favorite frame, your favorite canopy, all of that stuff. I'd like to just answer it all. Let's just build my whoop. So for this build, we're going to be using a Mob Light 7. We'll also be replacing the canopy with a B-Brain V2 canopy from Newbie Drone. The frame will be upgraded to the V3 Mobula 7 frame. And one of the last things we'll be needing is a EP2. This is a Happy Model EP2 that I have already used in a previous build. And uh, we're just going to repurpose it into this one. Let's go ahead and get our Mob Light 7 open. And we're going to get it torn apart. Next thing we gotta do is pop these motors out of the frame and we're not even gonna desolder these because we're just gonna reuse these motors on the next build. So we're just gonna pop it loose out of the grommets and then I'll try to show you this the best I can here. But I'm going to lead by putting the post, the motor post here, underneath the frame, get it started. And then I'm gonna put some pressure pushing towards the center of the frame with my thumb and using my index finger on the bottom here to pull by this post right here. I'm gonna just switch and just push down with my thumb and the motor pops right out, really easy. We're actually gonna put them back into the other frame the same exact way. So there's no soldering required to swap them this way. Super easy just to pop them in and out. Now we're gonna save these three grommets off of the original flight controller and then we're actually going to add three more of the same size grommets to our pile because with this new frame and the tall standoffs, two side posts and the rear post will have double grommets on them. We're gonna switch back over to our flight controller here. So on the outside edge here, we're gonna be doing pads that are labeled five volt, ground, and then we're gonna skip one and there's gonna be an R1 pad we're gonna be using on the edge there. And then the last one is right there towards the center of the back side of the board, pretty close to that USB port. If you're looking at your EP2 receiver with the antenna facing up, this is your ground all the way on the end. This is your five volt. This should go to your R1 pad and this last wire should go to your T1 pad that was in the center of the board. So I'm gonna solder it with the wires facing towards, it will go out towards the center of the board because I wanna wrap these wires around and I'm eventually gonna tuck the receiver like that and we'll put it upside down inside the frame and it'll sit between the flight controller and the battery while you're in flight. Okay, so we have our receiver soldered up now to our flight controller. Now we're just gonna twist the wires around like that Make sure that it sits nice and flush between the camera plug here and the USB port there. And since our frame is prepped and ready, we're just gonna go ahead and drop our flight controller in. Motors go in first and they go in the same way we took them out. So we're gonna start by putting the motor shaft between the battery tray and that flight controller post. Put a little bit of pressure on the post and push with our thumbs and the motor just pops right through and we'll move on to our next one. Just get these through quick. So we got all of our motors in now. We're gonna take our power lead and push that between this back post in the center and the first bar of our battery tray. Then we're going to fit our flight controller into the top set of grommets that we put on our flight controller post. So now with that all in, the EP2 is kind of stuck between these bars underneath 
and I have yet to have any issues with that becoming dislodged or flying out during flights or crashes. Next thing we're gonna do is just pull our motors through the bottom of the frame and then we'll put all of our motor screws back in and then we will button up the canopy and camera after that. Okay, all of our motors are all screwed in nice and tight. Everything is spinning freely. So next we're going to take our Runcam Nano 3 and we're going to fit it into the B-Brain V2 canopy. Now, there's an issue with the B-Brain V2 canopy that can be easily solved with some wire cutters and that is these little fingers that stick off to protect the camera just stick out a touch too far to put the Runcam Nano 3 in there without seeing them in your camera. So what I do is just take some snips and I cut these just about in half. And that way the lens still has some protection when it's fully in there, but they're also not in my view while I'm flying. Now as for getting the Runcam 3 to fit in this mount, it is possible, but you have to use equal pressure on both sides when you click it in. Otherwise it'll go in kind of cockeyed and uh, just won't sit straight. So like that, it's kind of crooked. So we'll pop it back out and I'm just gonna walk it in with both thumbs slowly, little at a time, both sides. There we go. Now we're nice and even. The square in the middle is touching on all four of its corners. The center of the lens is centered in the middle of the canopy hole there. We'll go ahead and plug it in and then we will install the canopy onto the frame and then we are just about done. I usually like to just make sure that the wire is twisted up nice and neat underneath the canopy, just so nothing's hanging out or hanging loose while I'm flying. Everything's kind of tucked up nice. So let's get our canopy screws in. Okay, we got our three canopy screws in. We're gonna put our last screw in the back here the grommet holding the backside of the flight controller. All right, and that will do it. The next thing we're gonna need to do is hook it up to beta flight and make sure that the flight controller is recognizing the EP2. So we'll go through and change the settings for that. Now that we are at the PC, we're going to plug our whoop in and get into beta flight. We're gonna go to ports and we're going to change UART1 to Serial RX. We'll do a save and reboot. Then we're going to go to Configuration tab, and we're going to scroll down to Receiver and change this to Serial Based Receiver. And then under Serial Receiver Provider, change that to CRSF or Crossfire. And then make sure to save and reboot. Now I've already gone through and programmed all of the Express LRS stuff to bind it up to my radio and everything. I'll leave a link down below if you need help with any of that. There's a lot of good resources that already exist and I don't want to waste your time by going through it in this video for those who already know how to do it. Okay, so that should be everything as far as on the computer end. The only thing left to do is put some propellers on. Thank you. The propellers, I normally would use quad blade gem fan 40 millimeter props. These have a one millimeter post hole in the center. If I'm not running the 19,000 KV Unibel Happy Model Motors, I'm running the Flywoo 19,500 KV Robo Motors or the HGLRC 22,000 KV Aeolus Motors. And recently, as suggested by Tokyo Dom, I have been running the Happy Model 25,000 KV motors with gem fan by blades and I have really been enjoying that. That is a screamer of a whoop. Now moving on to the camera. If I'm not going to be using the Runcam Nano 3, then I would be using the Foxier Pico Razor or the Cadex Ant Light. While we're waiting for our batteries to charge, I wanted to just show quickly how I secure the battery since the tray is made for 2S and we're only gonna be using a single cell. We're just gonna take a rubber band, uh, just use these thin ones here. We're gonna double it up one time and then we're gonna put it between 
the two power leads, the one from the battery, the one on the whoop. You're not actually touching any of the wires, you're in between the two. And then go over the top of the battery once. And that's it. And this will keep you from sliding in and out of there. And then what I like to do is plug in the whoop and then tuck the power lead up underneath the battery there. So that way when I'm flying, there's really just nothing hanging out at all anywhere. No antennas, no wires, no leads, nothing. Everything's nice and clean. Keep you from getting caught on stuff or getting things ripped off. All right, a little bit of our little popping and locking type stuff. Let's see how the tune feels. Pretty sharp. Feels pretty good. Well, that will do it for us here today. I hope you enjoyed this video on the mob thick. I hope it answered some of your questions. This is the daily flyer, one that I'm always flying. This, it's some variation of this. It's always on a 75 millimeter frame. It's always got the Diamond F4 in it. Um, almost always has the quad blade props on it. The motors change, the camera changes, but short of that, everything else is pretty much always the same. I'll leave those parts down below if you wanna just look through a list and that way you don't have to buy the bind and fly mob light and all that. Um, I can leave some links to where you can find some of these parts. Full disclosure, none of those links will be affiliate links. Uh, none of the parts that I use in my daily flyer uh, are, are sponsors of ours or anything like that. It's just parts that I like, I prefer, um, ones that are tough and that put up with my flying and my abuse. Things that are more convenient for me or easier for me to find. They all have their special reasons of why I use them or why I prefer them. Pick whatever makes you happy. Pick whatever you think flies best. This is just what makes me happy. So until next time, guys, this has been Heads from Infinity Loops. This is the Mob Thick, and you take care of yourself. We'll see you in the next one.